expected in part by the Massachusetts Cultural Council, a state agency which also receives oh, 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 Isn't that the, the, the little road man? Previously on Dirty Lawn. Has anyone checked him over? He looks pretty dead to me. He's dead. His blood is sprayed all over the machinery and floor tiles. Oh. I'll get the mob. Anyways, as you can see, Mel has gone to the spotlight for the moment. You're not peril. Is he dead? Jesus, what happened to the town crier? He's been shot. Shot? Wow. Is he dead? Who would want to kill poor Mel? And why? absolutely no family. There was no one there who truly cared about him. I'm beginning to think this place is all he had. I know, I know. After all, he was here all the time, but I mean, you never really think about what happens to these people after they leave. Where do they go? Who do they go home to? I don't know. It's just real heavy. Wow, Sid. You must have been working all night, man. This place looks really great. Yet somehow it's not clean. Yeah, well, anyway, hey, thanks for doing the OT. They're gonna be here any minute. You know, it's sort of fitting, isn't it? To celebrate the man in the very place where he lived and unfortunately died. I gotta go get ready. will not be clean until it is rid of the stench of corruption and murder. Yes, yes, someone murdered here! <laughs> Those fools they have assigned to the case will never figure it out. It must be up to us to solve this murder. Who bloodied our home? Only then can we return back to work. The big one is right. Our plan to destroy conventional laundry must be put on hold. How can we continue our work with disposable clothing if the stains of sin and deceit still taint our walls and floors? 
But how can we figure out who did it? No one was in the laundromat. No one saw. Did it? I did it! You did it! We all did it! We all wanted to. I know, but only one person pulled the trigger. And it's up to us to find out who could be so awful to do such a deed in our laundromat. Yes, the notes. Tonight is the perfect night to distribute them. Those who do not return the notes to Larry could be of the same mind as a murderer, stealing one person's fortune and taking one person's life. Yes! Tonight we will know! <laughs> Guaranteed to lift your spirits. Well, thank you, Larry. You are truly blessed. <laughs> oh, thank you for coming. And, and you too. Thank you for coming. Hey, don't even start with me, Alkali. I'm just here to pay my respects. You pay? I'm shocked. It's just so, well, so unlike you. And here I am standing, you didn't, you weren't generous enough to give the time of day. Yeah, well, don't get used to it, yogurt breath. I'm just here to pick up my laundry. Don't forget, six o'clock. Well, whatever your intentions, I'm sure Mel would have appreciated your presence. Hey, listen, I'm not a human, you know. I'm as sensitive as the next guy. Hey, are those nutter butters? Tina, so glad you could make it. Well, it was the least we could do, Larry. All of you are our only friends in this town. He's right, Larry. Mel was such a helpful man. We're all gonna miss him. Why don't you guys just go in and make yourselves comfortable? Tina, I love what you've done with your hair. Thank you, Larry. The laundromat seems so clean. You've done a really good job getting ready for this. I can't take credit for that. That was all Sid's doing. I think the poor guy stayed up all night. Well, it's good to see a man who's so dedicated at his work. Honey, can I tempt you with a cookie? Look at the crime the table. We may never get a better chance of this. Look at her, she's so vulnerable. Tom, this is a funeral reception. Where are your morals? <laughs> Twisted as it is, you may have a point. Let's go comfort the dear soul. Punch. Oh. <laughs> Huh. Thanks. That is one scary customer. It's like he's here and then he's not, you know? Yeah, no kidding. Maybe he's not quite the housekeeper we thought he was. Where's the trash? What do you mean, you fool? This is Larry's handwriting. This is a piece of the notebook. It must have fallen out of the cracks when Sid was cleaning. Who cares how it came to be here? Oh, we need to sell that scientific stuff and then we can patent the waterless laundry detergent. Are you absolutely deranged? We have to give it back to him. We can't figure out about where this gibberish. Am I deranged? Honey, just think of the possibilities. I am. 
The only way I get a piece of this is to let Larry finish it. Larry will scrap it. Hey, Larry, old sport. Isn't this a piece of your notebook, buddy? Tim. Tim! When did you find this? This is part of my successful formula. My waterless laundry detergent could be a reality. Where did you find this? Oh, right over there on the floor. That's too down. True. Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? I can assure you that I am in full possession of my mental faculties. In fact, even if you search the heavens and the earth, I doubt you would find a soul whose senses are more acute than mine. The denizens of hell are no match for me in this regard as well. I am completely conscious and aware of all which nature, in her good graces, has chosen to expose, both past and present. Currently, the sinister ticking of the clock, how loud it seems in the intolerable silence, and the soft rhythms of breath from the woman seated beside me are the only noises available. The hearing of which, particularly the latter, would do credit to a hare, let alone a man. At times, I truly believe her heartbeat can also be heard, but of this I cannot be absolutely certain, for I do possess a very active imagination. So how can you possibly say that I am mad? I readily admit to owning some anxiety, and with good reason. But madness? Never! If my irrefutable awareness of my present surroundings is not enough to convince you of my sanity, for you might naturally confuse anxiety with madness, then certainly my awareness of the past, and my rational narration of it, should convince even the most ardent of skeptics. Therefore, allow me to explain the source of my discomfort, so that your mind will be at ease in my vindication complete. It is difficult, if not impossible, to say when the thought first occurred to me, for thoughts, in general, are akin to the rising tide, moving slowly, almost imperceptibly, until breaching that state of ambiguity and coalescing into comprehension. I arrived at this house shortly after dusk. Although it had been years since our last encounter, we renewed our friendship in an instant, for he greeted me with much warmth, and I reciprocated with equal fervor. The seed was planted in my mind, not by my own accord, soon after being introduced to his wife, to whom I would later discover he had been married six months earlier. I took her off at hand into my own. So very good to meet you. I gasped, then abruptly retrieved my hand. I was shocked, stunned, but with all my strength I checked my reaction with a self-control alien to a madman. It was not her words nor her touch. Her smell? No, it was not that either. I almost forgot myself in the scene which my own reaction, although brief, may have caused. A quick glance, however, assured me that my friend either did not notice, or acted as of mine was the reaction to which he had grown accustomed when introducing his wife to a friend for the first time. I looked at her again, and there it was. I would have gasped a second time had I not instinctively steeled myself away from the embarrassment. It was her look. Nay, her eyes. Yes, that was it. Her eyes. They were inhuman. She looked at me with those piercing, seductive glance. I was helpless, doomed, possessed. I'm late. I'm going to be late for work. What? Now? <laughs> I mean, you got to be kidding me. I just got here. I know, man. I tried to get the day off, but I couldn't. There's a million things going on down there this week. There was just no way. Don't worry, I'll be back tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Lenore will take care of you. Before I could protest, he was gone. The door slammed shut, damning me. She stood by the very same door he had just exited and looked at me, the hunter, with those insidious, tempting eyes. It lasted but a second. I stretched my arms, yawned most audibly, and in general feigned weariness. I was, in fact, very much alert and scurried to my room like a fox before the hound. The guest room was small, and though it was obvious that my friend and his vulture wife went through great pains to provide comfort for me, 
I knew that commodity would be in short supply tonight. I placed my ear against the door, for my hearing is most acute. Listening, listening for any harbingers of doom that may present themselves. Finally, the sound of footsteps, her footsteps, I could detect, followed shortly thereafter by the soft, almost intentional closing of her bedroom door. She had retired for the evening. A feeling of relief seized me at the thought of not having to stare into those eyes again that night. I reclined, closed my eyes, and wished for nothing more than the sweet oblivion of slumber. It was all in vain. My active mind refused to accommodate my desire for rest. My mind entrapped my very being into a spiral of sinister thought and endless self-remorse. Oh, to attain the freedom of blindness! It was in this pitiful state that my plan first gained shape. This first night convinced me that I could not possibly survive the week, for that was my intended duration of my visit. Under the charms of that beast, under the torturous beauty of my lifelong friend's wife, the hunted must now become the hunter. The woman I would not harm, for it was the eyes that vexed me. My mind worked swiftly, and the plan to remove the eroticism from those eyes once and for all was quickly formulated. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder why I just don't get myself a new butler, but really I can't bear the thought of going to all the trouble of training a new one. There is no first experiment. Your dalliance is really trying my patience. A thousand apologies, madam, but it's simply that I found what appears to be Larry's missing experiment notes. Let me see those. Oh, they do look like Larry's scientific gibberish. Oh, these might be the ones he needs to complete his form, you know. Just think how much money I could make if I got him on the ground floor of this little establishment. Larry! <laughs> Larry, darling, honey, I I found some little piece of formula that looks like it might be something important. I can't believe this. More notes? Well, how can that be? I turned this place upside down looking for these things. Yeah, the police are usually pretty thorough when they conduct an investigation of them. Maybe they fell out of some crevices around here when the police were moving these around. Mm -hmm. well, whatever the circumstances, I'm sure not complaining. <laughs> These notes are going to speed the process up by months. Well, Larry, darling, just make sure to let some of your old friends in on the ground floor when you start up this little green machine. Blanche, all of mankind is going to benefit from my creation. Jeez, if no one invested his money more wisely, maybe he had more relatives here for his funeral. I mean, the whole point of these things is that all the relatives gather around and see who gets the biggest inheritance. And why are you here? Are you a relative? Who, me? Nah. Just that my company's having its annual retreat right now. I hate all those touchy-feely exercises. Fortunately, Mel's funeral fell on the day that for the seminar, money is not all that matters. <laughs> Don't you think it's a little crass? Hey, I had feelings for the guy. He was like a father to me. He always watched over me and my affairs. I mean, I feel deeply for this loss. Man, these mother brothers are fantastic. <laughs> Hey, what's this? These look like the notes from Larry's experiment. What a slob. No wonder why he lost them. 
leaving them all over the place like this, unless maybe these are original notes. Jeez, I can't make heads or tails of these things. I'm going to have to get Larry's help if I'm going to get it anyway with this. Larry, old pal. believe this is happening. Everyone return the notes. Who is the guilty one? Someone is not telling the truth. That one will reveal himself. Yes! <laughs> Someone did murder! <laughs> we just have to figure out who did this. Somehow. Donald's is a little bit, uh, out of, wouldn't you say? Would you like us to take you home? Oh, well, aren't you two just the sweetest things? Yes, I, I don't know what has come over guys lately. He has become so undependable. Maybe he's just raving in his own way. We're all trying to cope with his loss. Oh, yes, that could be true. Guys always was one to keep his emotions to himself. <laughs> I'm sure he's just coping with Mark's loss. Uh, uh, you mean Mel? Yes, yes. My sweet little rogue man. Oh, come on, Brad, Tony. Why don't we take you home? Okay. And uh, Tim, sweetie, would you get glass, please? <laughs> sure, sugar problem. No problem. Oh, let's go. Oh. Oh. No, you don't need that. Oh. Oh, well, it seems everything went pretty well today, Larry. Don't you think? Huh? What? Oh, yeah. Everything is going great, buddy. Just great. Looks like you've made a breakthrough on your formula. <laughs> this could be it. With these new notes, I mean, I feel progress is just around the corner. It's too bad Mel wasn't here to see it. Yeah, sure. Let's see, could you do me a favor? Could you get this junk out of my way? If I'm gonna find the right mixture for this formula, I'm gonna need all the room I can get. <laughs> Whatever, Larry. Larry, could it be? 